Hi everyone, this is Ryan Hoime, and I'm the director of social media for Bombatel, and here we got Phil Madison from Core Products. Welcome, Phil. Thank you. How are you today, Ryan? Good. <laughs> so, um, how did you get um, involved in your company? How did you start it? Well, Core Products is, uh, we started in 1988, and I started out, I had been a truck driver and a, a college student, and I had hurt my back, and my... Uh, chiropractor uh, was treating me and I was pretty impressed with with this chiropractor or at least with the care that I was receiving and so I, uh, I, I decided you know maybe being a truck driver wasn't such a good idea and, and so I'd gotten rid of the truck and started looking for a, a job in sales and I happened to walk into the chiropractor's office who he was treating me for an upper back and neck injury and I walked in and wearing a suit and tie, and he said, what are you up to? And I said, well, I'm looking for a sales job. And he said, well, I have an idea for a product. Well, I was the kind of guy that thought, you know, I would really rather have an opportunity than to have a job. And he had an idea. And so I started out with uh, one of our most popular pillows, the Double Core Pillow, started that started the company, and, and we went on from there. And then how did you get involved in other um, products then? Well, the product line has grown both through the demand of our, well, mostly from the demand of our customers. Some of our customers will occasionally contact us. In fact, they regularly contact us and say, I have an idea for a particular product. Could you make this? Could you make that? I met with a doctor today at lunch um, that, that has a scenario like that, and I have a rough sample in my car where here's an idea for a product, and we take the product on and add it to our line. And, Pay them royalty in some cases, and in some cases we might have a, a professional that uh, uh, actually wants to take a product and market it themselves, and in which case we're invisible to the process. And some cases we're it's our own product design and development. So we actually own, I'd say the majority of the time it's our own product design and development, and uh, we actually own about 16 different patents. Wow, <laughs> and, and that's um, quite a um, prop. I mean, that's a lot of work too with the whole patents, and it can get spendy too, can't it? Well, it can, and sometimes those patents come along with a uh, an acquisition. For example, the Omni, Omni Massage Roller is a uh, company that we actually bought. The company, the gentleman was ready to retire. We bought the company, and and with it came a patent or two. So we've done we've done all of the above. Yep. And then referral and cl client retention are the two uh, most important aspects of massage therapy business. They present some of the biggest challenges. How do how can retailing products help you with referring with referrals and client retention, would you say? Well, you know, that's a great question and it, it it applies to chiropractic, it applies to massage, it applies virtually to any of the healthcare industries. And let's let's take an obscure example just to start with. Let's take an example that's healthcare, but outside of what all of us are doing. So I'm sitting here looking at the Massage Nerd logo, and here you got a great big pair of glasses on in the logo. Right? <laughs> and, and so you go to the to the eye doctor. The eye doctor evaluates your eyes. He tells you what he can do to help you. My, record, my, my doctor that I went to recently recommended a vitamin to me for my eyes that's actually a Bosch and Lom vitamin that I also see advertised on TV. And then, of course, he recommends the glasses. When you go out front, you buy the glasses, you put them on, and off you go to your office, workplace, and the first thing that somebody says to you is, oh, those are nice new glasses. And, of course, they can't help but notice them because they're front and center right on your face. Well, those are nice. They look nice on you. And the next thing that they say, where did you get them? Well, you know, if a lady walks out the door with a new purse and she sees her friends, oh, that's cute. Where did you get it? Everything that we that we do and, and interact with in terms of products, if our friends are interested, the most frequent question is, where did you get that? Which brings up the rest of the story. I tell you, if I'm happy with the eye doctor, if I'm happy on a blog, if we were doing it on the internet, we do, we've done this for years in person, and it's the reason that, that, that referral business happens. Now, if I walk out of a massage therapy clinic and I've had a lovely experience and a great massage and I feel much more relaxed and so forth, you can't tell that on me. You can't look at me and you're not going to say, oh, you look so relaxed. Where did you get that? 
But if I walk out with a product, something I can share with my friends that I can use with my family or that people see me using or that I'm really pleased with, it's one more reason for me to talk about you. And I'll always talk about you because the next question you will ask is, where did you get it? So here's a great example is, uh, let's take an ice pack, right? That would be kind of like the eyeglasses for the rest of us in physical medicine, right? So an ice pack, I leave the doctor's office, I walk in with an acute injury, he puts ice on it, he sends me out the door with the ice, I'm using the ice in the car on the way home, I get home, I continue to use it for a little bit, I throw it in the freezer, it gets cold again, and I put it back on my uh, area where I'm uncomfortable, my low back, my shoulder, whatever it is where I'm uncomfortable, and right away if they ask me where did I get it, well, it might be pretty easy for them to know because it just might have your name and number logo, uh, and logo pre-printed right on it. So products are a great way to build referrals because they cause people to have one more reason to talk about you. And would you say it's the same? I mean, um, usually if somebody had a great massage, they don't tell as many people as if they had a bad massage. Do you think it's the same way with products, would you say? Yes. And the more visible the product, the more likely somebody is to talk about it. So if it's a product that you, that you might use, and share with your friends while you're using it, then the more likely uh, that you're going to actually talk about it. But if you're very happy with the product, you probably tell three or four people. If you're terribly unhappy, you probably tell five or six or ten, right? Yep. So we talk a lot more. For some reason, I don't know, for some reason we tend to lot, talk a lot more about the things because we're not happy with. And why is that, you think? Why? <laughs> what, is it just our culture in general, you think? Or I don't have any idea. You would think we would talk more about the things we're happy with, right? Yep. But I think that I think people like to fuss and complain if they're not happy with things, or that maybe the frustration level is so high when they're not happy with something that it stays with them and stays on the top of their mind longer. So a positive experience is much more hard to reinforce than a negative one, and so that's why we always want to give the best possible experience that we can to our customers. Yep. And what do you think the biggest objections for um, you hear with retailing products? Well, certainly that I don't have space, that it costs too much. A incredibly popular one is my, my, my customers or my patients can't afford that. And they all, they all boil down to the same. No matter what the objection is that you hear, it always comes down to the same underlying objection. I don't have the self-confidence to ask somebody to buy something from me. I don't perceive myself as a salesman. And so that's really, truly a self-confidence thing. I'm afraid to ask a question because I don't want to get a no. And in every element of sales, that's always the reason why. It doesn't matter what you hear, right? It's like the, the old joke, you know, it doesn't matter the excuse. If I don't want to lend you my lawnmower, I don't want to lend you my lawnmower, right? <laughs> but, but I probably won't say I don't want to lend you my lawnmower. I'll make up some excuse. So... All the excuses we hear about why somebody doesn't want to offer products um, always boil down to the same thing. Either I don't have an environment that's conducive to it, or I don't have the confidence to, to offer those, and I'm afraid to get a negative objection. A good, a good quality manufacturer, whether it's Bon Mattel, whether it's us, whether it's anybody else, a good quality manufacturer who truly supports your industry and who's focused on our industries um, will help overcome a lot of those objections. So, for example, if you have a product and you get it and you're not happy with it, Core Products' guarantee is satisfaction. Our guarantee is we guarantee your satisfaction. If you're not satisfied for any reason, you're welcome to return the product. So that's as broad a guarantee as we could, as we could dream of, right? So if you're a professional, you offer a product to your consumer, your customer, doesn't like that product, it doesn't fit, it's, it, it's too big, it's too small, it, it's uncomfortable, whatever it is, they bring it back to you. We don't want that to become your problem, so we'll happily take it back, give you a brand new one, so you're all loaded up for the next customer. And the real good quality manufacturers do that. What's really scary in the retailing crowd is when somebody will uh, buy some product, it's, it's a lower quality product, it's... it's uh, not necessarily available from some bona fide source that's about their industry. And now they go to offer the product, and when the product doesn't sell through properly, they've got nobody to standing with them 
to help them with that customer. Yeah, and, and your and your facilities too. I bet I was there last year, and they're just gorgeous. They're huge too. I mean, you're. I mean, it's it's just impressive. Well, thank you. You know, we're in 1988. We started. And I was uh, having dinner with my oldest daughter the other day, and she's 20, almost 25 years old, and she was uh, in diapers when we started. So, you know, you sit and you think about how long it takes to build a business, and and how long it takes to build a brand name and a reputation, and you know, I think that our customers, our customers, the, the healthcare care providers, they need to understand that when we're standing behind a product, whether it's us, whether it's Bond Mattel, whether it's uh, whoever it is, right? It, it could be Performance Health with the, with the uh, BioFreeze, whoever it is. We're as interested in protecting our good names as you are in protecting your good name. And so when we offer tools and we offer warranties and we offer product, we want to know that we haven't done anything to damage our reputation and we take a little risk as well because if we sell our product to somebody who mismanages it and doesn't treat our product right and ultimately treat our joint customer properly, then we take the risk of mismanaging our brand. And so that's one of the great things about being involved with the massage therapy associations that we've been involved with is that these people are about the best practitioners in the industry. They're providing the education and the tools, and, and these practitioners are trying to be a cut above everybody else. And so we know that by providing professional quality products through those practitioners, we're protecting our brand as well as we're helping to enhance the brand that you represent as an individual provider. And I know I, I, I myself, I ran into problems when I first started my business about, I didn't, I hated sales. I hated that term sales, everything else. So, so how, do you, how do you get around that then? Well, selling, selling is a natural process because selling is a process of providing a customer a solution to a problem. Now, the sales that people don't want to do is if I have something in my basket, you know, or in my, in my truck or in my possession that I am really anxious to get rid of and I'm not necessarily trying to help somebody solve a problem then I'm not comfortable selling. So if I have some widget, I don't care what it is. Say I got a, I don't know, say I got a snowblower and I live in Texas, right? Well, there are not a lot of call for snowblowers in Texas. So now I have to try and get rid of this snowblower. Well, that's a very uncomfortable situation. I'm probably going to take a loss on it. I'm probably going to have to find somebody who's moving up north and wants to haul this thing with them as opposed to wait until they get there to buy one. And, and all of a sudden, the sales process is me getting rid of my problem and trying to find somebody to take it. That's an uncomfortable sales process. But when you, sh when I show up in your office and, and you're a very qualified therapist, right? And I show up in your office, I've come there probably with a problem. I've come there for well, one or two reasons, right? I've come there either just for comfort and pleasure or I've come there because I have a problem. The, the therapist that we're talking to most of the time are people that are trying to help somebody with a significant problem. And I've had those problems. So if I come in and I've got low back pain and I'm really uncomfortable and you work on this low back problem and you and you help me find some trigger points that are an issue or, or some pressure points that are an issue and, and you really are helping me understand how I can solve this problem, one of the things I want to know is, right, what can I do when I go home? Well, I'm not going to see you again for two weeks or whatever the time frame is. How can I manage this problem again when I get home? Well, if you now recommend a good solution to my problem is to take some hot and cold pack home, and whether you take the hot and cold packs that I have here in the freezer and I can put one on you now, or whether you make a bag of ice out of a baggie and a paper and a towel at home, either way, you're going to solve that problem. So you, as an interested party to my problem, because I came to you for my problem, if you're interested in that, and you offer solutions, that doesn't feel like selling, does it? No, it doesn't. Oh, because you're sincerely sharing some of your education with me. Now, here's the great example. As I walk in, and I say, Ryan, this low back's just killing me. Jeez, I've had heat on it for the last three days. It's swollen up. I can hardly move. And you've got a brochure there, and it talks about the ice method, and it talks about when to use cold, when to use hot. When, and, and it's obvious this is acute injury, and I've been treating it wrong, and I've had heat on it all this time. Well, you're more than happy to share with me that, 
that I that I kind of went the wrong direction. He might be really good if this is a chronic injury. It might be really good if this is uh, arthritis and I'm trying to cause it to free up and loosen up. But man, if it's a new injury and I did it, you know, working in the yard, I did it playing ball, I did it golfing, however I accomplished this injury, got in a car accident, whatever, and now I'm here for solutions. How, how do I get rid of my pain? Well, I think you're doing me as your customer a disservice if the only thing you tell me, all I like it before is give you a massage and I'm not willing to share any of my other knowledge. And then this question I've seen many times in chats, um, is it ethical to actually retail products? Well, I'll give you a great example. I think that's a, I think that's a wonderful question. Is it ethical? What we were talking earlier about the, about the, uh, about the eye doctor, right? Is it unethical for that eye doctor to recommend glasses to you after he's given you an <laughs> exam? It seems so. Now, my wife, she fell down the other day. She was... She has a uh, she has a scooter, right? She's a college student. My wife's been a college student for about thirty years now. <laughs> I'm, I'm never going to stop paying tuition. <laughs> uh, so she's she's got this long commute across campus. She goes to the University of Minnesota. So she gets this little scooter like a kid would use, right? Two handles, and you put your foot onto one thing, and you push with the other foot, and off you go, right? Well, man, she could commute across campus twice as fast on that little scooter and it fit in her lock. So she didn't anticipate that at her age, if she falls down on the scooter, that things might crack and break, right? So she busted her shoulder oh. in three places, three places. So she busted this shoulder. So she goes to the medical doc. Now, is it ethical to retail a product? She goes to the medical doctor. The medical doctor determines that this shoulder needs to be immobilized. What do you think would be the response if they said to her, Mrs. Madison, you need to go to Walmart and buy and take your arm that's broken in three places and buy a shoulder immobilizer, take it home, try and figure out how to put it on so that you can hold your shoulder perfectly immobilized just like this for the next uh, six to eight weeks. Because it'd be unethical for us to give you one, fit it, and make sure that it was on you, right? And send you out the door in the most comfortable position that you could possibly be in, Mrs. Madison. Now, that would be unethical. So why would we consider any recommendation of a product to be unethical if we know, in our heart of hearts, our customer has a legitimate need, we have the capacity to fill that need, we have the capacity to make sure that they understand the product, that they use it correctly, and that they understand the benefit that they're going to get from that product, and it's, and it's reasonably priced compared to the magnitude of the problem that they're experiencing. That is not unethical. It would be far more unethical to send somebody home and say, figure out how to cast it yourself, and there's supplies available at Walmart. That would be wrong. And I think some therapists are afraid of the whole diagnosis thing. I mean, even though they're not really diagnosing any of those kind of problems, but they're, I just think they're, they're scared in a way about those things. Well, it comes back to self-confidence and whether or not you've taken the time to get properly educated on the topic. If you fully understand the benefits of hot and cold, you'll never have a problem recommending that somebody go home with a cold pack, particularly if you've put it on them during your care. If you feel that they need a hot pack and you've used it with them during their care because they're appropriate patient for a hot pack and you put it on them and you want to know that they're going to get the best possible use that they can out of that product, it doesn't seem uncomfortable to send them home with that product. It, it's it's a natural part of the sharing of knowledge. Here's here's the problem. Here's what we can do to help you with the problem. Here's what I think is the best solution for the problem. And if you'd like one, here's what it costs. That's that's a very very normal part of any conversation. My goodness, if you weren't dealing with a customer, if you were dealing with a friend, and let's say that you were both avid fishermen, and you knew that the bass were biting on red worms, and not only red worms, but a particular brand of red worms. And you ran across your buddy and he said he's going fishing, wouldn't you, and you had some extra red worms, wouldn't you say, hey, take some of these red worms with you. These are the ones you need. Well, absolutely you would. That's a normal part of conversation. I have some knowledge. It's different than the knowledge you have that can help you to solve the problem that you have or help you get the greatest comfort and advantage out of your life that you can get. 
it's normal and natural for me to want to share my solution with you. And so that's a part of our normal conversation. The uncomfortable thing is if I have something I don't believe in, and I want to force you to buy it because I want you to take my problem, I have inventory of a product I don't believe in, and I don't understand it, and it to me is a burden, and I want to force it on you, that's, that's uncomfortable selling. We, we don't want any, you know, in our area in healthcare, we don't want to be involved in that ever. That's not, that's not what we're doing. We're, just, we're solving problems, and we're simply helping people understand that. Yeah, because one of my first jobs back in the day was selling vacuum cleaners, going to people's houses and stuff like that, and that scared the heck out of me for um, sales and everything else. On right, but had you been working in an environment where somebody came to you looking for the proper vacuum cleaner to buy in the first place, and you've been working at a Sears store in the vacuum cleaner department, and when I walked in, I was pre-qualified, much as when you walk into a, a massage therapist, a chiropractor, a physical therapist, a medical doctor, any of the dentist, you're pre-qualified. You have a problem, and you've sought out the expert that has the solution to that problem. So in your vacuum example, if you came into Sears, and you came in and said, you know what, I have a problem. I need, I, I don't either don't have a vacuum, or I need to replace the one I have that's broken, or whatever the case is. Now, the next step in the game would be for you as the vacuum cleaner salesman to start asking some proper qualifying questions. And those proper qualifying questions all come from the same root. Please help me to better understand your problem. So how large is your house? How much carpet do you have? Are you using are you going on wood floors? Are you going on carpet? Are you are you using this uh, every day? Are you using it once a week, once a month? How big of an area? Do you have uh, an excessive uh, problem with cat hair or dog hair or something of that nature? And therefore you would turn around and you would recommend to me the product that best fit my needs. If I had a little tiny apartment, I was a college student, just starting starting out, I obviously can't afford, nor do I need the best quality vacuum on the floor. I need the vacuum that solves my problem. On the other hand, I got four or five kids, two dogs and a cat, and a big house, and, and, and uh, we live on a dirt road. Well, I need an entirely different quality vacuum cleaner than that college kid in their first apartment. And so you'd recommend that, wouldn't you? Yep, definitely. <laughs> different than going door to door trying to create a problem every time the door is answered that may or may not exist. Yep. So our customers in healthcare, they always come to us pre-qualified. I've looked, I, I've looked for a massage therapist because I, I perceive they have the solution to my problem. So my question now is, did I find a good enough professional so that they'll give me all the solutions that, that they have available and let me choose which ones I'm most interested in, or will they only give me one hands-on and stuff. Yeah. And then what should a therapist look for when adding retail to the practice? What should a therapist look for when adding retail to their practice? Well, I think that a therapist should look for manufacturers that are supporting their industry and that are providing some of the tools that are most appropriate for your, in, for your industry. For example, behind me I have some of our displays set up. And we spent a long, long, long time producing good quality products and providing them for professionals to take and put in the closet, close the closet door, and at the time that they recommended a product, finally open the closet door, select that product, bring it out, close the door again, and offer that individual product to the patient. We did that for many, many, many years. Boy, our boxes were plain white. All they had was a label on the end, so they inventory nicely in the closet and all kinds of things. Today, we've come completely out of the closet. You can see in these displays behind me, for example, there's, there's, uh, there's two posters here and here. This one talks about pillows. I, I don't think you can read it on the screen, but across the top it says, are you sleeping on the right pillow? Well, the reason it has that up there is we would like you to ask the professional whoever has posted this up on their wall is am I sleeping on the right pillow and the solutions and the answers to the questions are down below do you have these various symptoms do you have uh, pain and stiffness, stiffness in the neck do you wake up with headaches do you have tingling in your hands and arms do you have trouble sleeping are you sleeping on more than one pillow then it offers why the tricord pillow is the best possible solution to that. It allows you to sleep on your back. It allows you to sleep on your side. It provides a nice, smooth, curve-type curve, curve type support for your neck when you're laying on your back. And it allows a full area for when you're laying on your side. 
So during the night as you sleep, if you roll to your back and back to your side, you'll go from one kind of support to the other, which is more appropriate because obviously if I'm, if I'm standing this way, I have a nice smooth curve in my, my neck and in my thoracic spine, I have a nice smooth curve this way. And in my lumbar spine, I have a nice smooth curve that way again. Well, boy, if you take an x-ray of me uh, this direction, my spine is going to appear to be relatively straight. And so the needs for sleeping on my side are dramatically different from the needs for sleeping on my back. So the goal with a poster like this, and then there's brochures and so forth to go with that, the goal with the poster is to cause the customer to ask the question. And the reason we're doing that is because we know the professionals are uncomfortable asking the question, and we learn through production of these displays and through sampling them and getting them out. Now we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them out. We know that if the customer asks the question, the professional is much more comfortable to answer it. So we queued up the customer to ask the question. Can you tell me, am I sleeping on the right pillow? Well, now we're back to the vacuum cleaner question, right? Well, tell me about your problem. Where, how do you sleep? Do you sleep on your back? Do you sleep on your side? Do you wake up with any discomfort? Do you find that you have headaches? Do you find you have tingling? Do you find you have a stiff neck? Do, you, do, you, do your hands and fingers get cold during the night? You know, I mean, what's going on? So now we start asking in, in sales, those are called qualifying questions, right? Well, what, in normal conversation, they just demonstrate that you're interested. You know, tell me about the problem you have and tell me the details of the problem that you have. Well, so I share with you all the details of the problem I have. Now, it would be unfair then for you to not offer a solution. And if you choose that the solution that you want to offer is go to Walmart and buy a firmer pillow, I don't, now you, you're out of control. You don't know what I'm going to buy. You don't know what you've just recommended. Because you don't know what environment you're now going to put me in to make my selection. On the other hand, if you do like Felicia Brown did, and in her most recent newsletter that just came in my email today, she has a picture at this point of, point of uh, purchase display right here. On uh, the top of that display... Stand by, I'll go get it. Okay. <laughs> on the top of this display, again, it repeats the question, are you sleeping on the right pillow? And then, and then inside, it explains the benefits of that product and how to use it. So this, this goes home with the consumer, helps them educate themselves as to what the right product is. There's a place on the back for you to put your name and address and so forth. And then the most important part, because the scariest part of selling is to ask somebody for money, the most important part is right on that display, there's a nice little white spot where you can write the price. So if, if I come in with that problem, and I've, and I've now asked you the question, you have the display out, out where I can see it, and I see the price, if I'm uncomfortable with that price, I'm not going to ask any more questions. Or I may never ask the question to begin with. But if I see the display, I see the price, I see the question, am I sleeping on the right pillow, and now I'm cued myself up to ask that question, I've already satisfied myself I'm comfortable with the price. The only thing I want to know is, is this the proper solution to me, for me? Well, if you've gone online and you've learned about the product that you're offering, you've, you've, you've you know, listened to the professionals talk about it online on our website, we've read the brochure, better yet, you've used one yourself, you're happy with it. Now you can do one or two things. You can offer them absolutely. Here's why it will work. Here's why it won't work. And you could tell them, no, I don't think that's your problem. I think your problem is something entirely different, and therefore you need to to try some other solution at home. But my goal is, man, I can only afford to come in for a massage once every two weeks, once a month, once a, once a week if I'm in a lot of discomfort. What can I do to take care of myself the rest of the time? If the problem's headaches and it's caused by improper sleeping posture or or neck posture or a response to an accident or something, I'd like to reestablish that normal posture, that normal curve in my neck. Boy, I would, I would think it would be unethical for you to not share with me the best solution that you know I could look for. And my question to you is, why are you making it so easy for massage therapists? <laughs> What we're trying to do is make it as easy as we can for customers because I understand as a business, when I started this business, I started, we have 120 employees and, and our brand is known all over the place. I started this business literally by myself and I started by myself with a neck injury with the professional who was treating me for the neck injury and he said to me, you know what, the products that are available today don't suit the needs of my patients. We never started out from the perspective of we want to sell product to people. 
we started out from the perspective of we want to solve problem that needs to be solved. And the problem that needed to be solved was how do I get the best possible pillow for a bad neck? And I had the bad neck. It was, it was my problem. And the product wasn't available. So we, we developed that product, this doctor and I, together. He has since passed away and is no longer involved in the business, obviously, since he passed away. But, but that's, that, that's what it's about. So if, so if I can make it easy for myself when I'm the customer, then all I have to do is think about what do I want to know? What do I want to see? What do I want to know? What, what's the experience that I want? And now make it so that it can be replicated. And here's what I see. If you're an individual massage therapist and you're busy all day long treating, you're treating five, six customers a day, boy, that's a heck of a schedule. For you to figure out how to make a poster like that on your own is entirely impossible. And it doesn't matter how enthusiastic you are about a particular product. For you to figure out how to make a marketing tool and how to make a display and how to do this and how to do that and do it on your, on your own so that you can properly educate your customer, it's impossible. You just don't physically have the time. There's a skill set it goes into making that and shooting the photo and putting the copy together and all these things that the individual professional just doesn't have time to do. So we have a group of people that make that stuff. We bring it out. We, um, my gal Sarah, many of you have met Sarah, uh, Sarah Nagel at, at uh, some of the trade shows. And <clears throat> when Sarah puts this stuff together, she goes out to a professional office that's busy and has a lot of traffic. She sets it up and she sits in the waiting room and she waits for people to come in. And she listens to how they interact with the staff. Do they pay attention to the product? She might ask a few open-ended questions. And we make sure that people fully understand how to use the tool and that it seems normal and natural. The displays are all of the display products are less than two years old. And I got to tell you, the compliments we get are incredible. Felicia Brown was here in this same, in this same work environment that I'm sitting in today. And she was filming a segment. In fact, if you go on her website, I'm sure you can see this segment. And she was talking about these orthopedic pillows. And she was so excited because she'd been over in the factory and she'd seen them being made. And she said, wow, real people really sew that case together. And real people really, you know, put the fiber in that pillow and close it and package it. And she, was, she was just thrilled, right? And so she was. she's a hands-on person, right? And she's kind of reluctant to offer products to patients. And not reluctant because of an ethical reason or whatever, just not necessarily as comfortable as she might otherwise like to be. So we sent her home with one of these displays. She called us up. She didn't have the display up in her office environment for more than two days, and it was empty, and she had to call and reorder <laughs> her display, right? So two of them sit nicely in the display. If you have the third one in it, they, because they expand when they come out of the box, it just doesn't look right. So they... You, you get three in the box, you put one aside, and you put two out where it looks nice in the box, like it does in the box behind. So she did that. The three pillows were gone in like two days. She has since gone through boatloads of those pillows, absolute quantities, because Felicia is a consultant. She helps people understand how to market and grow their business. But she also is a practicing massage therapist, and she has regular clients that come to see her. And she just couldn't believe the response that people really sincerely wanted to know. Now, are other opportunities to go to Walmart. Walmart's purpose is to figure out what's the cheapest product that I can get the most turns on per square foot in my space. What can I get people to buy the most quantity within a given period of time per square foot? Their purpose is entirely different than our purpose as healthcare providers. Our purpose as healthcare providers is how can we make sure that you go home with a real, honest to God, solution to your problem. Yep. And then what are some of your more popular um, core products retail displays for massage therapists, would you say? Well, the, the pillow is huge. The Omni Roller, which is right behind me here as well. Omni Roller, this is really nice. In fact, any time you're doing some kind of a, of a in the public kind of a thing, where you're out where people can see you, the Omni Roller is absolutely spectacular. These, these have a fairly reasonable retail price. You can retail them for less than $20, right? Each one, they're multiple colors. They come in either a white base or a black base. The, the, the colors on these alone draw people like mad. And this is 
over the top of skin. It can be used over the top of a garment. It's incredibly comfortable to use. And it allows you to come in and, you know, you can, you can roll it on a tight muscle. If it's on my back and I want my spouse to do it, she can get in here with the hand and put some good pressure in those in those areas where I feel like I need some really good pressure. And, and you can still feel that knot because it will bump bump over that knot if that's bothering you. And and you can, it's just fantastic item. That's a great retail item. The uh, hot and cold display. Now, all these displays are the same. They all come prepackaged with whatever the product is. They all come with a header card. It has an engaging question across the top. Uh, do you know when to use this hot and cold? This is a great question. Every professional in the business gets that question frequently. They come with brochures that answer the question, when to use hot and cold. When the brochures are all gone, there's a place here, call this number to order more hot and cold. Uh, brochures, more hot and cold brochures. We'll provide the brochures free, so when you reorder those, you get them free. And each and every one of these displays comes with one poster, so you can put it up on the wall to get people to ask that question. These hot and cold packs are either in the freezer or microwaveable. They can, if you buy a couple of cases at a time, they can be personalized, like this one here, you can see has our brand on it. That's so screened right on there. It says core products and talks about when to use it and so forth. But you can get these personalized. It could say Massage Nerd and your phone number right on it. Well, if it says Massage Nerd and has your phone number right on it, let's think about what happens. I'm at home. I'm living my life. I haven't been to see you for a period of time. All of a sudden, I hurt my shoulder. And I have a shoulder that's easy to hurt. So I hurt. So I go to the freezer. I get on my cold pack, which I keep in the freezer all the time. I put it on my shoulder, and as I'm putting it on my shoulder, guess where your name showed up? <laughs> Can you think of anything to cause your name to cause your brand, Massage Nerd, to cause that brand, Ryan, and your phone number to show up exactly at the moment I need that information? And for is and this will last for years. So now I take it out and I put it on one of the kids because they hurt themselves. And all of a sudden I'm putting it on somebody else. Well, now I've got it on their shoulder and I see, I see Ryan's name here and his phone number. Well, that's, that's awesome. I certainly know who to call. If I pulled this out, there's a good chance that I might need some of your help as well at some point in the recovery from this injury. Um, so that's, that's the best, best, best items. Have the box for the Genie Rub Massage. Can you see that on the screen? Or? No, uh, no. This is the Genie Rub Massager right here. The Genie Rub Massager is a mechanical massager. It, um, it can be used with or without a, a fleece cover. It, it's a professional tool 100%. We have chiropractors, physical therapists, massage therapists. They're all using these. It offers an orbital action so it doesn't pound like this. It's orbital. It massages like this. And you get this out, you put this on somebody with a stiff back, a neck, sore legs, whatever, and as you use this, either in the practice or at home, it softens that tissue. Anytime we massage with our hands, with a mechanical device, however we do it, we cause that area to be stimulated. When we stimulate that area, in comes fresh blood. With that fresh blood comes oxygen, comes nutrients, and out with that increased blood flow goes waste products, right? So that's why we talk about after we've had a massage, make sure you drink a lot of water because we know we've loosened up a bunch of waste product in that in the system, and we need to cause that waste product to leave the system, right? So this does the same thing. Now, what's nice with this product is this you use for several minutes. Now you've loosened up an area. One of the things we've talked about with with uh, healthcare providers and massage is how easy it is to damage your hands. So now this is the device out of the package. So it's an orbital massager. Massage is this way. You can hang on to it with two hands. You take this and you put it on that sore tight muscle. And now you let this work and you can put you can put a good amount of pressure on this. And it won't be uncomfortable at all. And you can and it's variable speed. You can adjust the speed up and down by rolling the dial here. And you work it in there and work it in there. Well now it's not hurting your hands. And you're on the hardest area to work on on that person's body. And if it's a big guy like me, 
it can be very uncomfortable to, to put a lot, lot of pressure on something that needs a lot of pressure on me, right? It can be uncomfortable on the therapist, not so much yep. on me, but on the therapist. Well, now you can work that area and can soften it. Okay, so now you come back with your hands. And when you come back with your hands and work that area, it's dramatically more comfortable on you. And in massage, man, as soon as we tear up this part of our hand, we injure it in the morning. We do it early in the week. We've got a full schedule. We're going to be uncomfortable because once this is hurt, it's slow to heal, particularly if we continue to re-injure it. And so well, these kinds of tools are really nice. More importantly, they can go home with the customer because one of the questions is, what can I do at home to make myself more comfortable and to help myself live with this product? Problem. Another great item that we have, have you seen our, uh, our therapist though? Yep. This was this was developed by a, a uh, by a uh, customer of ours that we met at one of the massage shows. Her name is Gina Nunke, and Gina, she said, "You know what, Phil?" She says, "We can't afford to make a living selling therapist thumbs; just too darn expensive, right?" Her her problem was they had made a wonderful solution to avoiding hand injuries, and their problem was, okay, we're going to take this product and we're going to travel around the the United States and pay for hotel rooms and pay for booze, but can you see the fly that just landed yep. on that? <laughs> you don't know how to forget that. No. It's <laughs> live and in person. <laughs> so, anyway, Gina said, you know what? We can't afford all the costs. Could you take this item? Now, we, we, this is a great example. You said earlier, where do we get our product ideas? So here's a professional brought us a great item. This item fits comfortably in your hand. It goes up into the palm of your hand. It allows the pressure to come off of the thumb and be forced up here into the palm of the hand. So we started taking this to trade shows. We take this to chiropractic shows. We take it to massage shows. We take it to physical therapy shows. And 100% of the time, the customers come up and they go, I can't believe how often I've hurt this part of my finger or my, my hand. And I mean, boy, by, by the time you've spent the time and effort to become really good at what you're doing, built a good customer base, educated yourself, and now you injure this part of your hand, you're out of business. So you take this, you let it drive the pressure up into here, and your thumb just floats here, so you don't have to put the pressure on the thumb, and you can come in here and you can massage in here. You can see right there, I can massage that quite well. Now I can even roll it over this way, and if I wanted to massage somebody's neck or back, can, can you see how I'm demonstrating that? Yep. Okay, so you could do it this way. If you want to do pressure point therapy, you could go straight down like this. This is a little pointy. You could go straight down here. This is flat. So if you wanted a flatter area, but you wanted a lot of pressure, you could come down like this. And you notice all the time I'm not putting any pressure on this part of my thumb. 100% of the time we're doing this with our thumb where we learn to use our elbow or we learn to use the butt of our hand. And all of those are good techniques as well. But this is a very nice item. It complements that. So now, my therapist shows me how I need pressure on this spot right between my shoulder blades on the left side that's been bothering me for a long time. I go home and I ask my wife, can you rub on that spot? And she gives me this half-hearted rub on that spot, and, then, and she's, she loses interest. Well, man, if, she had, if I could go on my therapist's thumb, and now I can show her how to use that, and she can get in there and she can work that spot pretty good, and now I've got some other solution that I can do in between, in between, no. Uh, sessions. These items are also great. Let's say you're doing a, a, a mall kind of a show or a community show of some sort. If you show up with a, a table, uh, let's say it's a sit-down table seated sit for seated massage, and you and two or three of your friends get together and you're going to do a seated massage at this community fair of some sort. Well, man, if you've got a few other products like these available in that community fair environment and you're charging ten dollars for a ten minute massage in the community fair and now you sell a couple of massage roll, uh, omni rollers, you sell a hot pack or two with your name already printed on it, you show somebody how to use the, the uh, therapist thumb and they take it home, maybe you've got a display of pose and a, and a genie rub there and you show all these various tools and people go and buy that stuff, you're going to make a lot more money than if you just send them home with, with you know, the, the notion that they've had a ten minute massage. And when they get home carrying this new item and they share it, and so now I get home with this with this therapist thumb, 
and I show my spouse how I can work that area and, and I and I and I help her a little bit and it's not uncomfortable with my hand. And so what's she gonna say to me? She's gonna say, Where did you get that? <laughs> I'm gonna say with a massage nerd. He was over here at this thing doing chair massage and he did this ten minute thing on my back and he used that tool and man it felt like great. So I brought home well, I might have some oils, I might have some of the some some music, I might have some biofreeze, I might have a nice selection of products, all of which makes me appear to be substantially more interesting because I've got a lot more solutions to offer than just my hands because you can't see what's in my head. So I'm just dramatically more interesting the more stuff that I bring to the party. And so that's the way I see that question. <laughs> And what changes have you seen in the healthcare, and how does it affect massage therapists, would you say? Well, I think the biggest change that we've seen in healthcare that we understand and completely can grasp so far is this switch towards consumer driven healthcare. And I think that the HSA, the health savings account, is the beginning of consumer driven healthcare. Because the health savings account, I buy a high deductible plan and I, and I put away a certain amount of dollars into a tax-free fund that I'm setting up so that my day-in, day-out health care can be paid for. But now what happens is my high deductible plan allows me to take care of the big, bad, catastrophic event that I hope doesn't happen, but I'm totally in control of my day-in, day-out health care choices. And all of a sudden with consumer-driven health care and the HSA, all of a sudden I'm shopping and I'm comparing and I'm learning about solutions. Every professional you talk to today knows that the consumer is more educated than they've ever been because in a heartbeat they can, they can have tons of information about every topic. And so uh, I, w I have a friend that's administrator of the local hospital and he said, man, he said, people walk in today, they'll walk in with a ream of information you know, and sit down at the doctor and they've already diagnosed themselves, whether it's right or wrong. They, a lot of times, already decided what they think the issue is, and they got a whole fistful of paper to talk about. It. So, the consumer wants to be in control of the environment. In fact, I uh, I know I can talk about this later, but ask yourself: Would you rather be a patient, or would you rather be a customer? And of course, there's also there's a client. But would you rather be a patient? client or a customer? Which would you rather be? The really question is patient compared to customer. Well, if I walk in as a patient, I have surrendered control and we don't like that. I don't like it. You don't like it. I walk into the professional's office and unless I have knowledge, unless I'm willing to ask a lot of questions and unless I am bold and unless I respect the fact that that word doctor means teacher, and that should apply to all, all of us because any of us that are working in healthcare, we should view ourselves with that teacher role in mind. And so if I walk in, I not only want physically what you can do for me with a massage or a physical therapist or whatever a chiropractor can do or whatever can happen with a medical doctor, but I want knowledge. That's what because 99% of the time, I want to participate in the solution to the problem. So I think consumer-driven healthcare is taking that to a whole, whole other level because now not only am I getting the knowledge I want and, and am I more educated, but now I'm also able to start to compare and shop price. Because keep in mind, in that HSA account, whatever's left over at the end of the year rolls over into the future years, and, and that's my own savings account that's focused on my future healthcare needs. And if I let it all get spent because I didn't manage it and shop, and pay attention, well, then I gave away all the control. So I think consumer driven healthcare is where things are going in the future. Now, that being said, we have a whole bunch of brand new undefined rules that, that you know, we're not going to understand until not only we're not going to understand them, we're not going to understand the cost or the benefits associated with them for two, three years to come because when you read about the new healthcare laws, uh, they're so incredibly ambiguous that even the people that are in the know don't understand them yet because they have done it's too undefined. And so what we do know is that as of today, we have traditional insurance and, we have, and, and many of us have HSA plans and that puts the consumer more in control. And I think you should be in control. 
yeah, that just just makes sense with that and stuff. And I mean, um, I mean, for the massage practice, have you have you heard of any massage um, for saving money for their massages too? Have you heard of any um, HSA programs with that too, or if you? And, and this has been one of the education topics I've sat in on at some of the conventions. If you as a therapist are working in partnership with a healthcare provider that's preferring your service, sometimes or many times that can be a benefit that you can, that you can uh, apply to insurance for. If you have an HSA, you are in control of a lot of that decision making and if massage is listed there and allowed in your state, it would vary state by state. But if massage is allowed within your state, then you could use your HSA card to pay for that. For that, and you're paying for it out of your health savings account. And if you choose to pay for that versus something else, that's your choice. In my mind, I have an HSA, and I provide HSAs for my customers, my uh, employees. In my mind, uh, we should look at this like car insurance. Car insurance doesn't pay for brakes. It doesn't pay for wipers. It doesn't pay for a headlight that goes out. It doesn't pay for quite a variety of things. Car insurance pays for the big, bad, catastrophic event that we hope doesn't happen. Your homeowner's insurance doesn't pay for your grass to get cut. It doesn't pay for to recock your windows. It doesn't pay for any of the maintenance that goes into your house. It pays for the big, bad, catastrophic event that you hope doesn't happen. I think the only way we're going to be able to afford health care in the future is eventually that the health care system has to be similar to auto insurance and similar to home insurance and then we're protecting ourselves from the big bad catastrophic events the normal stuff we pay for because the normal stuff uh, might not or maybe in the future won't be that expensive to begin with particularly as the consumer gets more in control of it there becomes some more competition as people try to compete for those to sell those services okay and then um do, um, do you believe in keystoning then well, the word keystoning is a, re is a retail term, and that means buy it for a particular price, double the price. So if you buy this for $9, double the price. The reason that you keystone an item, that means I bought it for 9 I sell it for 18 But when I bought it for 9 my invoice said 9 It also said down here some shipping and whatever else. But when I keystone the price, I just keystone the price of the item. The, in the shipping and everything else was just included in my, in my profit margin. If you take and you're buying these one at a time, and not how you keystone it, and that's say it costs whatever it costs nine dollars or something to buy or whatever the widget is. I don't know. I'm, I'm not using that particular widget as an example. Mm -hmm. But you buy something widget and you pay nine dollars, and now you pay four dollars to ship it. Well, now you have thirteen dollars. Now you double it; it's twenty-six. So. I think that you and and it's now it's twenty six and it's let's say twenty six is too high maybe it's a nineteen dollar item. Well, the the, uh, the the guy the guy down the street he bought those a dozen at a time, and he keystones just the raw material price, just whatever the widget is, because he's dividing the 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 freight by twelve pieces. And the freight was you know substantially less per piece for twelve pieces. So if you're going to keystone an item, I would primarily keystone just the price of the widget and and figure that as you sell more of these items or as you make more of a market for an item, you're going to, you're going to see a decline in your freight costs. And then what's the easiest way for people to get started and how do I know um, what my customers will buy? Well, the easiest way to get started is to ask the manufacturers choosing to deal with what are their most popular products. In our case, the items that are on the counter behind me are my most popular products and the easiest ones for massage therapists to offer. In our case, we also offer a complete guarantee of satisfaction. So if you take on some of our displays, well, by golly, they'll, uh, we'll, we'll stand behind them. So if you don't sell them through and you want to return them, satisfaction guarantee, you can return it at any time for any reason. The absolute easiest way is to go to our website or uh, or our Facebook page, this so would be Facebook forward slash core products, and request a set of our posters. And we will absolutely free, we'll send you a set of these posters. There's four of them. There's one for hot and cold, there's one for pillows, there's one for omni massage, and there's one for low back belts. We'll also send you 
the brochures that go with those posters, and it would normally be part of that point of purchase display like you see behind me. We'll send you a set of those, and we'll send you that absolutely free. You'll get the posters, a selection of the brochures, absolutely free. Put the brochures out, go to Walmart, and buy these frames. Because if you put the poster up without the frame, it doesn't look nearly as nice. We really wanted to be able to figure out how to provide the frames, but it's just impossible to ship the frames. So we ship the posters, if you request them that way, rolled, or you can go to our 800 number, 800-365-3047. It's 800-365-3047. And you can call our customer service and ask them to send you a set of the posters. You can go to our Facebook page, coreproducts.com, or, or coreproducts.com. Anyway, any way you choose to communicate with us, request a set of the posters, frame the posters. The posters frames are 12 bucks each. Put them up and find out if people ask you questions. If they're asking you questions, they sincerely are interested in you coaching them on what the best solution to their problem is. And do you guys have any um, new products that are coming out anytime soon then? Well, I'm scared of new products, but, but it's... It's hard for me to talk about those until I have the tools available. But we have quite a number of new products that are coming out. And and so I, I just, I'm going to, we're introducing those to our own sales staff in July. So I'm okay. amazing. <laughs> if I start talking about that now, people start calling interested in those new products. And I, the <laughs> service is going to say, huh? <laughs> Is. We're constantly producing new products. We're real excited about that. Okay, definitely. Well, thank you very much, Phil. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I'm very impressed with you, too. Well, thank you, Ryan. I, I enjoyed doing this, and, and, and uh, I'm, 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 I'm incredibly proud of you. You are, you are, an, you are an amazing person, man. I mean, to have, to have dreamed up this concept, created a channel, given it a great name, Massage Nerd, uh, created the personality and the presence that you've created. You you are single-handedly bringing more attention to massage and helping people share education in a better way than, and, and in an incredibly unselfish way. I am so impressed with you, and I am just honored that you would invite me to participate on your program. That's just a huge honor for me because, because man, I tell you what, I, I think what you're doing is is top shelf. Well, thank you. And you can't see me, but I'm blushing now. So. <laughs> if, if, if we were side by side, we'd look like a, we'd look like eggs in the bottom of an egg basket, wouldn't we? Uh, yep. And, and Phil has the best facial hair in the massage industry too. So. <laughs> Gotta have a little curl in your mustache. That's like pasting a perpetual smile on your face right there. Yep. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, um, Phil Dan. So. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank